Hey everybody. Here we have a Gateway E Series Slim Desktop in for service. And this is my second time working on this computer. Last time I worked on it, it was just a simple fix and needed Windows reinstalled. But this time the power supply failed, which is the factory power supply. Let's go ahead and have a look inside this machine. Okay, here's the inside look at the computer. And as you can tell, things are crammed pretty tight in this machine. Because this is being a slim form factor machine. You can see like the modem card for instance, the um the cover is not very tall, it's really slim. And the computer uses a micro ATX motherboard and has a Pentium 4 CPU, a Northwood core CPU, has two gigs of RAM installed. Let's see. Has a ID DVD burner, has a floppy disk drive back here and a hard drive down there. So anyways, um, the power supply, like I said, is what fell in this machine. And this thing doesn't smell very good either, because when you pull the cover off, you can really smell the burning smell. And um, the owner said this thing, the power supply let out some magic smoke when it went. So let's go ahead and have a look at that power supply while we're at it. And I made videos before about gateways using underpowered power supplies. Well, I think I have. Maybe sometime before I probably did make a video about that, but well, I'm not 100% sure. But I have made some videos about Dells <clears throat> and some other platforms using underpowered power supplies. Anyways, this is a Newton power supply, only rated for 180 watts. It tells you max combined power on 5 volts, 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and 3.3 volts is 180 watts. That's barely even enough to handle this whole machine. And it managed to handle it for probably 8 or so years before it died. So I guess it led a pretty pretty decent life. Well now what I'm going to do is seeing that this power supply is proprietary designed, I don't have any of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to rebuild this system into a standard micro ATX mini tower case that uses a standard ATX power supply. And luckily the motherboard is, like I say, it's micro ATX so I can easily install that in any micro ATX form factor machine. So anyway, let's go ahead and start tearing this thing down. Okay, I removed the front bezel and lifted out the gr the um, drive cage. So that way you can get a better idea of how everything looks inside this computer. Like I say, everything is crammed in here pretty tight. There's the hard drive. It's a 120GB ID hard drive. And um, this computer, seeing that it's in such a tight setup, it runs very hot. And I'm surprised it lasts as long as it has. And um, I just made a video not too long ago about an Acer machine failing after four years of use because of it overheating due to being such a small form factor design. And of course, I don't recommend using such small machines. Just for this reason. They run so hot. I mean, computer cases are big for a reason. I can't stress it enough. Okay, the good news is the um, power supply that failed didn't take the motherboard with it. Motherboard works just fine. Okay, just got finished pulling all the components out of the old Gateway Small Form Factor system and used many of those components in rebuilding them into this e machine. I used all the components out of the Gateway minus the power supply to, well, in the modem to rebuild the system into this e machine's tower. And everything works wonderful. Uh, Windows runs just fine. And here is the power supply, the new power supply if you want to call it that. This is a um, repaired Bastec HCX 2512Z power supply. I actually had to replace the AC receptacle on because the old one was broke. And I had to replace a couple of capacitors in it. But it works perfectly fine. And of course there is how the rest of the computer looks. So anyways, I almost forgot to mention, there's the original power supply out of the computer, out of the gateway. And I'll actually open this up and have a look at it in another video, because I got so much stuff I gotta go and get done, and I'm gonna let this thing sit overnight. So that way any residual charge from the capacitors will discharge. So anyways, um, and the question for comments, feel free to ask.